Good afternoon, and thank you for joining with us today. This is Mohan here from Day Traders Action and Boomerang Day Trader, and we're ready to get started with our first uh, webinar of the new year, the training webinar for Boomerang Day Trader. This is very exciting, and uh, I got a lot of things to share with you. We're here in the coming into the brand new year, and wow, what a new year it is. Look at that volatility and the crazy new stuff coming out. This is unbelievable. But uh, we also are going to cover back some of the period of the holiday period with the Boomerang Day Trader. But before we get started here, uh, make sure you understand the disclaimer and risk disclosure. This is the CFTC required disclaimer. We always like to put it up here because we like to follow all the rules and make sure everybody understands. You must be aware of the risks and be willing to accept them in futures trading to invest in these markets. Don't trade with money you can't afford to lose. It's not that type of deal. This is for people that are well off and have a lot of extra money to use for trading. They can fund and cushion their accounts and stand the risk and develop the type of character that's required to become a futures trader, That, namely a ninja warrior trader, someone who's brave, gutsy, and willing to take the risk and has the extra capital to back up that uh, whole position. So with that in mind, uh, again, welcome and thanks for joining with us today. What an amazing uh, new year it's been. Um, everything's cooking here, and we should be able to... Okay. Greetings, traders, and welcome to our first uh, trading session of the year on Boomerang Day Trader. And thanks so much for joining with us. What a year it's been getting off to the first week. Just a few days of the month, we got all kinds of amazing news coming out and uh, just high volatility and the market just going wild, uh, getting smashed down again here into the close as they're coming, just closing out the futures with a Dow down 252 points after uh, two previous days. Well, yesterday they kind of brought them back from being down 90 points in the Dow up to plus nine, but then a good solid smash again today. So uh, it's just a wild scenario out there, but Boomerang Trader keeps working beautiful just by following the simple rules, which I'll go over with you today in detail. So first of all, um, you saw the disclaimer I posted. You should all understand that. Just realize that futures trading is very high risk and you should only use capital that you can afford to invest in the futures market and spend. It should be way above and beyond all your ordinary necessary expenses. And uh, so with that in mind, uh, we'll get started here. Now what's exciting is that I'm going to go over a couple of weeks of trades here, not all of them, of course. I just recently did a webinar where we went over the trades from the period of 11.18 to 12.2, and I went in extreme detail over all of the different boomerang setups. I'm not going to do that here because um, I don't want to spend the time on that today, but mainly also because going back two weeks, which I've got this set to go back to here, scrolling back to this is a West Coast chart, so these times are... If you just add three hours, you got the New York Times. This is 12:23, which was just uh, that that period just as we're coming into the two days before Christmas. So you got to remember that whole period between this time, 12:23, and up through the New Year. Honestly, is a time where you should just be with your friends and family and take time off from the market. Certainly, you can trade. But here I am. I'm going to do a webinar on the most, uh, I should I should say, not volatile, but just the most choppy, low volume period where you most traders, in my view, and I I include myself in this. For 25 years, I've never traded during this period. I just leave it alone. It's time. It's the end of the year. It's good times. You can feel in the air. People are shopping for Christmas, and uh, it's kind of you know people have uh, <laughs> those reindeer ears on their car. You ever seen that? <laughs> and some people are wearing the Santa hats and all. It's just kind of a goofy, happy period in the markets, and a, a good time to just uh, take off. But in spite of that, I'm going to go over the trade setups of Boomerang just to show you that even during these very low volume, choppy periods. Uh, boomerang day trader will work beautifully for you so uh, thanks again for joining with us and uh, we'll get started now first of all um, I'm recording this session here now so what I'm gonna do is I won't 
follow any questions or anything that you might send, you can send them and I'll go back over them later and we'll go over every single one of them after about the first hour or so. I keep a tight eye on the clock so we get a nice good YouTube recording of this so you can watch it again if you want. But the idea is that uh, if you just hold your questions, I'll go ahead and uh, cover those later. But let me just talk for the first hour about Boomerang and how to use it exactly. Just as a review and an update, we'll go over some sessions going back to two days before Christmas. This is 11.23 here, uh, this session here. And you'll see how there's going to be half days and stuff in between and Again, this is a period where you shouldn't even be trading, but we'll end up working our way towards the last three days of extreme volatility with these heavy gap down opens and all that. And uh, we'll go over that. First of all, I want to say, when you get a heavy gap down opening, you look on your screen and if you have a data vendor or you're looking at your directly at your charts and you see the markets gapping down 25 ES points or something, don't get emotionally excited about it. Just say, oh boy, we're going to get blasted on the, the markets and the Dow. But it really doesn't affect any of the boomerang rules or anything. There's nothing new to do. Let all the other uh, people who don't have boomerangs scramble around and try to figure out what to do and try to do all these little tricks with Fibonacci retracements and all that stuff and <laughs> try to catch these moves. I'm going to show you the real, real simple boomerang methods that work consistently over and over again. 90% of the time, you're going to get winning trades just following these simple rules. So with that in mind, uh, let me get started. First of all, how can I say this? I guess for me, because I invented Boomerang back in uh, long ago, you know, after five years of, of developing it, I released it around 2009. And so we've been on the market quite some time. Uh, we've been one of the top selling softwares on NinjaTrader and now on eSignal on a lease basis, on a monthly basis for quite some time. And it's quite exciting to see people benefiting and getting solid rock, solid trades especially after being, you know, break even or net losers over quite a period of time in most cases. So Boomerang is designed by me to provide you with a steady stream of winning trades and break free from that cycle. Now I want to say this up front before I show you the exact method. The hard part of any job, not just Boomerang, I consider Boomerang Day Trader to be a job it's a daily job. You're, 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 yeah, you're trading, but trading is the job. It's just like if you work in an executive office, your job is, say, head salesman or one of the salespeople or whatever. Your job is to go in there and sell the company's products. That's what you do. That's the grind of the work, the grind of the procedure, which in most cases in sales, I know I was in sales for 20 years before I became a trader. I loved it. I put on my suit every day and drove around in my Cadillac and called on clients and made 50 to 100 phone calls a day and we ran ads in the Wall Street Journal for the product I was selling which by the way was the world's first portable car phone. This was long before cellular. I was uh, became the international marketing director for that company but I loved it. You know, I would train salespeople. I would go in every day and every single job out there no matter what it is there's a grind element to it. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're never going to get away from that. Of course, your work can be exciting, like trading with Boomerang is very exciting and it's challenging and different every day. But in a sense, it, there's always a grind to the work, which is get up, get in front of your screen, prepare a little, and I'm going to show you some other things to do today for, to prepare for trading, and go to work. And here's the key to Boomerang. Once you understand what I just said, that there is that grind element, if you will, call it that, you accept it and you go to work with the idea that instead of going to an office and having to make, if you were in sales, for example, or administration, having to make 20, 30, 50 calls a day, follow up with people, schedule meetings, get everybody there on time, get to the meetings and conduct the meetings, go out on sales call, pop into the person's office, and you drove all the way over there and the secretary says, oh, he had to leave on an appointment. He tell him he apologizes, but he had to leave. And yeah, you drove all the way over there, but he's sorry. He had to leave and didn't call you or whatever. Anyway, the point is that's the grind of, you know, work and sales and you just do what you do. In Boomerang, the grind, if you will, and it's not even a grind, is that is to sit and wait. 
sit and wait, not be emotionally pushed around by the markets, but sit and wait for the exact crystal clear boomerang setups. Now, on those setups, we're going to be targeting three points with a five-point stop. Same old routine. You can set your trading platform here on NinjaTrader or any of the other platforms that you use. Uh, NinjaTrader will print it right on the charts. But if you're using another platform to execute the boomerang trades, it, you, they usually have brackets you can use and everything. But the point is, all you're doing is waiting for those exact setups and that's actually the hardest part of it the hardest part is to wait for the exact setup know how to identify it which i'm going to show you exactly how to do that today and once you identify it make the trade on the pullback the sig line in this case here here's a here's a sell trade right here at the sig line right here see that at 4604 even i got the chart blown up nice and big so you can see that 4604 even and down they come for three points all the way down to 9875 so easily you got three points in there don't worry about catching more points or anything just get real real good at following the rules catching the three points because if you trade what i call a blue collar working traders account which is just a small account five to seven thousand bucks you can trade four contracts on that even with the expanded margins of the last couple days the uh, the brokerages all expanded the markets because of the volatility. You can still trade four contracts. Maybe with the expanded margin, you'd maybe want to have seven grand in your account. You always have some extra money to cushion that account. It's a business, you know. It's like if you're running a pizza parlor or something, you got to have extra capital in case you run out of pizza dough. Say you get flooded one night, you got to have backup resources to make sure you stay in business you don't want to turn those extra 30 40 50 calls that come flooding in for pizzas because you ran out of dough what kind of idiot would do that running a pizza business oh i ran out of dough what what are you nuts just wasting revenue similarly in futures trading have extra capital around to keep your account cushioned exactly right and uh, do the right things to keep things working <coughs> So with trading, boomerang, all you're doing is waiting for the exact right setup, and that's all you're doing. Now, recently, I think it was Monday, there was only like two boomerang trades. Now, the market's flying all over the place, and we'll get to that day in a minute or a couple minutes. But the point is, it doesn't matter if the prices are flying all over the place, and don't let the markets push you around. Remember, we don't let the markets use us. We use the markets to hand us a paycheck every day with Boomerang. Did you catch that? There's a big difference. We don't let the markets push us around emotionally. We use the markets to give us a paycheck. So most traders, it's the opposite. It's the first one. They let the markets push them around. Oh, it's a gap open, 25 points down. I got to get in there and figure this out and make a trade. I gotta join the sell side or I'll bet they're gonna reverse. I gotta run some Fibonacci's on this and try to catch a reversal. No, you don't. Well, at least with Boomerang, you don't. Those, those amateurs doing that, let them try it. They're gonna get stopped out in most cases. You probably remember the days when you used to get stopped out like that too. Anyway, the other rule is when it's extremely volatile. Here's a concept for you just stand aside <laughs> don't let the markets push you around one of the rules of boomerang if you see whipsaw candles coming in like this whipsaw and back and forth and changing colors too much stand aside if you got all the dynamic trend bands matching colors stay on that side wait right like in this case here's uh, you know the market getting going at the first hour trading all of a sudden though look at the crossover the dynamic trend bands and they're whipsawing all over just wait. There's a buy channel. That's not a buy trade, for God's sakes. You got the dynamic trend bands crossing over the downside, and they're both blinking on the dynamic trend band number two, but they're matching color on the sell side with the magenta color here. Wait for the sell channel. Wait for the pullback to the sign line right here. Get your finger up on the trigger. Boom, hit them short. Just sell at the market. We only use sell at the market, buy at the market, and close. Flatten them out. 
Don't get into the bid and ask and try to put limit orders in there. It's a waste of time. I designed Boomerang for market orders. You're going to get some slippage, but it doesn't matter. Like, for example, here, here's your sell. Here's your pullback, the sig line. Down they go. Well, it, it, it scored over four po half points. You're just looking for three. I tested this over and over and over for many years, and that's why the five-point stop to handle the, the noise of the trade and the uh, three points to capture those. Getting back to my point, you go to work, you have a blue-collar working trader's account. If you capture a three-point move on four contracts after the commish, that's going to be 230 bucks. If you do that four times in one day or even three times, that's $700 on three trades like that. 700 bucks. That's a nice paycheck for the day. That's what you're there to do. That's like any job. It seems different with trading because the market's pushing you around emotionally. You've seen these prices flying all over, and you get a trade like this, and you get your three points and went, oh, I could have got five. You're being pushed around emotionally. That's not the system. Let them go 10. Let them go 20. It doesn't matter. You followed the rules. You followed the system. And you put $230 in your pocket on a blue-collar working trader's account. Now all you want to do is wait for the exact next trade and do it again. And you want to wait. And if whether it takes an hour or two hours or another trade never shows up, it doesn't matter. You're just waiting to follow the system. For example... Right when that trade here, and again, this is 12.23, two days before Christmas, you shouldn't even be trading. Just forget it. As far as I know, I think this is a half day. No, it was a full day, but you shouldn't even technically be trading in these days. But if you got to, look at boomerangs working for you. But look, they come down here, and they're all whips on, and they spike radically, spiking to the upside here. Big giant spikes. Look at this one here. 46.07 and the high 46.11. Four and a half point spike candle. Anything over three points, be careful. Those are spike candles. Even still, with the matching dynamic trend bands and the new crossover, still, if you nailed it right here on this first pullback signal line, 675 ran up to 1150. So you still got three points out of it, but be careful. That's a lot of whipsaw there. That's your. Um, at least the second winning trade in the row. Let's see what that day turned out to be like here. Here they are opening. No trades here because you got conflicting dynamic trend bands. Here they are matching color here. New buy signal. This is uh, 20 minutes into the market. Up they go. A new buy channel. Matching dynamic trend bands, which are the easiest trades to take, frankly. Pull back to the sig line here at 975, and they shoot up to 16. See, now there. You got long at 10 46 10 975 maybe 46 10 quarter and they shot up to 16 you took three points at 13 who cares if they went further you're not there to try to be rambo and catch all the exact move or anything you just want that three points you want that 230 dollar paycheck well here they go coming down here a sell channel new sell channel here and this one you would have missed most likely because the dynamic trend bands weren't matching and they weren't spread tight enough. One of the rules is they got to spread at least a point and a half. There's, see on the far right there, 46.10, 46.11.75. Well, they're 1.75 one apart. You might have caught this. Some of you more experienced boomerang users might have said, no, they're spreading tight enough here. And you might have caught this short here. That would have been your second winner in a row. Here, the crossover on the downside has occurred. We just went over this trade. They're spiking around. It's two days before Christmas. <laughs> Give me a break. Tomorrow's Christmas Eve. You know, why are you trading? Well, you just, I don't know. You want to trade. So God bless you. <laughs> I'm you're like me. <laughs> trading fanatic. <laughs> a ninja warrior trading fanatic. Nothing wrong with that. They've crossed over the downside. The first message there is watch for the sell bias. Sell here, and we already went over this trade. Third winning trade in a row. Here's a here's a lot of whips out here. Look at this one here. 475 jumping up to nine quarter. It's a lot of whipsaw there, but even if you grab that pullback sig line, you would have gotten three points. I don't recommend trading this one here. It's too much whipsaw. This one though looks a little better. Look at this one. New sell channel opens up. All the matching dynamic trend bands instantly appear. 
go short here at the market at 450. Maybe you got it, got them out at four. They ran up to 550. There's always a little pressure on the trades. Pulling them back to 4600 and lower, you got three points here. That's the what fifth winning trade in a row. And then they flip around. Here's another big spike candle opening them up. They want to go long here. Look at the matching dynamic trend band. Isn't this easy? Pull back the signal line. There's your sixth winning trade in the row on Boomerang. You're coming into the close. For God's sakes, let me do the math here for you. You just have to remember on four contracts with $4 round turn commission, you shouldn't be paying more than that. Otherwise, you're paying too much for a mini NAS. This is mini NASDAQ trading. It's the best contract for day trading. Uh, especially with Boomerang. You can use the others. You can use the mini Dow. You can use ES, TF. You can trade the, the gold, the currencies, all that stuff. But I'm telling you, every day you're going to have a job if you trade the mini NAS. We do it ourselves live every day. I do it. I love it. Have been for 25 years. Um, the 230 bucks a contract, or a, a per trade on four contracts, right? times we just had six winning trades 1380 bucks after commission for god's sakes stop trading yeah it's an hour and a half before the market's closed you're done six winning trades in a row give me a break you made 11 1380 bucks after commission stop trading <laughs> you probably should have stopped after the third trade 230 bucks times three 690 bucks 700 bucks and two hours of work remember you're, you're giving up going to an office and a job and having a boss complaining about you're not doing enough you came in at seven and you left early johnson at seven o'clock but boss i got a family at home i wanted to have dinner with him just for the sake of it because i do have a family you know oh well i'm sorry you don't seem like you're that interested in this job you're not putting enough into it you're this kind of crap get rid of it go to trade boomerang follow the simple rules and uh, just stay at home and learn what i'm trying to explain to you just follow the exact rules that's the secret now the following day again i'm going to repeat 1224 christmas eve day don't trade the markets <laughs> these days Go be with your family. It's a half day anyway. Still, I'm going to show you the boomerang trades. Look at this. This is not a day to trade. It's a little short day. The volume is minuscule in the markets. They open them up here, and they kind of blast them up higher. Then they start trading lower. No trades here because the dynamic trend bands aren't squished together. They're not matching colors. Here they are. Here's the cross under of DTB number one. Here's a new buy channel. And here's the, the market matching colors right here at 21 quarter. And 21 quarter, look at that, runs up to 25 quarter. There's three points in that minuscule move. Then they whipsaw them lower. Then they shoot them higher. Then they come back lower in the day's end. So you still got a winning trade out of the day, but you shouldn't have been trading that day. Shame on you if you were. Go. Go have some fun with the family or uh, take the kids out to pizza. Do something fun. It's holiday time. Here's the 28th. So now you had the, the Christmas. You had the New Year's. The whole weekend went by. Now we're coming back to work on the 28th, which again, next year, remember it for next year. Don't trade during this period. Go uh, have some fun. Take the time off. You're going to be trading all year with Boomerang every day. The, the same old routine of following these exact rules. So just go have some fun, and uh, you can always trade net the following year like we're doing now. And boy, what a mess. Bless this mess. That's what I say. When I looked at the market on Monday, I went, well, Happy New Year. Bless this mess. <laughs> God. Anyway, you got all the dynamic trend bands matching color. Extremely volatile market coming back after Christmas. This kind of started before the New Year. You can see it. And... No pullbacks to the sig line. Boomerang is going to mark six pullbacks to the sig line after the trade channel opens. And you really want the first one to three. The, the earlier, the better, as long as the rules are there. But once they get past it, they're not going to mark it. You don't want to take those trades. Even though they panned out, you don't want them. Believe me, 
I tested this thing over and over before I released it to the public. Unlike so many vendors out there, they, they, you know, they don't have a job, so they decide to become a trading expert, and they create some software program. They don't even trade themselves. I'm not going to name names. It's too many. It'd take me a whole seminar to name them all. And then they try to sell it to you for $3,000, and it's just embarrassing. But enough of that. Here's a boomerang setup here. Why is this a boomerang setup here? The dynamic trend bands haven't cost, they haven't matched color. Why is this a trade setup for Boomerang? That's right, because the spread between the dynamic trend bands is a point and a half or less. It's so easy to measure, you just put your uh, cursor up there. You have to use a cursor, and the way you get that, I'm sure you know, but let me just show you. I like to show everybody everything. Right click on your chart, go down to cursor, you have a pointer, and you have a crosshair. I use crosshairs, but if you click pointer, now it's just a pointer. You see that? So you've got the dynamic trend bands here, tightly spread. You have a new buy channel, and they're spread out within a point and a half of each other. I'll show you that. That's why you put on the crosshair. You can see here's the new buy channel. Right here on this first pullback, you just, it takes 10 seconds. You put your cursor up there and you look 45 76 just use the last two digits 76 even and the dynamic trend band number one 74 quarter so or 74 50 so right here it's exactly a point and a half that's tight enough you can just actually you can visually look at it and see that they're spread tight here this is too far obviously look at that see 76 75 74 quarter it's too far Wait till they're spread nice and tight like this. Buy that pullback sig line. There's your winning trade there. So here's an example of a day. Right after Christmas, you come back and you go, okay, I'm going to trade this week. And, and you hadn't heard me on this webinar tell you don't trade this weekend, so you didn't know that yet. You think you're going to trade. It's not a normal week. The volume's low. All the big shots, all the big shot traders are gone. They're all on vacation. You should join them. I have for 25 years. Join them. Don't trade. Take it off. Let the amateurs fool around with this stuff. Anyway, there was no trade. You see that? The market opened. There was nothing to do here. There's no trade set up here because everything's mismatched. And it's in a big downtrend here. And you didn't get a trade signal here. So you had to wait from uh, top of the hour, 10 o'clock, all the way down to an hour and 20 minutes before another boomerang trade showed up. So what? Go get some some coffee or tea or a drink of water. Go sit out in the garden. I mean, if you got it, especially if you got, uh, you know, a handheld, you can watch the boomerang charts on a, 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 you know, a laptop or something. You can always do something else if you wait for the setup, but I recommend you sit by your computer. But the point is, this took an hour and a half, but you don't care. You're just waiting for the right setup. Now, don't get remember don't get pushed around by all this movement it doesn't matter all you want is the right setup so here's a tight spread pull back sig line you just put another 230 bucks in your pocket or your your first 230 bucks you got a small account five to seven thousand bucks that's a small account average traders will have ten to twenty thousand in your account the big traders will have a hundred grand plus and the monsters will have you know a million bucks in their account they're trading 50, 60, 100 S&Ps, whatever. I knew a guy, quick story, back uh, when uh, the, the first intense rigging of the markets by the Federal Reserve started, and there was some, it's a very complex story. The point is the Chicago Tribune called me because I had, he, they got a call by one of the world's largest e-mini traders who had contacted me also, and they were trying to get me to help them figure out why the markets were getting so rigged because a lot of the guys were leaving the S&P pit. That's when the pits were active. This was 2003, 2004. And they were leaving the euro, to, uh, the S&P pit to go over to the euro dollar. And they contacted me. I said, I can see the rigging going on, but this guy could really see it. Listen to this. He told me, and he gave me his badge and everything. You have to have special equipment and everything to do. He was trading 1,000 ES contracts at a time, 50 to 70 times in and out every day. Thousand contracts. When he pushed one button, he'd load a thousand contracts on the ES and he'd do that fifty to seventy times a day. So sometimes people tell me in my trading room, Oh, you're so you're making too many trades. You made twelve, fifteen trades and I go, 
that's nothing. <laughs> of course, we try to minimize our trades in the room if we can, but it just depends on the market conditions. But I'm telling you, there are big, big monster traders out there that trade like that. This guy said he was the biggest. I had no way to confirm it, but I was pretty convinced he was. When we talked, he was walking the talk. Anyway, there's your first winning trade. And so now, again, another example. So you got long, you got your three points, and you go, oh, man, look, they're going so much higher. And, oh, look, all the rest of the day, they just went straight up. Doesn't matter. Who cares? First of all, like I said, you shouldn't be trading on this period. This is the period leading up to New Year's. Go do something fun. You're going to have all next year to trade. Anyway, you got one winning trade, and say la vie, the market just kept coasting higher and coasting higher and coasting higher. So, and I got a sign up on my desk, and I often talk about it. It's a big sign. It says, so what? Who cares? No big deal. And you repeat that every time you have something frustrating happen in the market, like if a trade gets away from you and takes a run or you get long, you get your three points and it keeps going. So what? Who cares? No big deal. Look at this stupid thing. It just kept going and going on the mini NAS. It just wouldn't stop, you know. This was that day they ramped them up in the new year. The riggers probably knew they were going to squash the market like they're doing now. But uh, you you got to trust me on that one. They plan all this stuff, uh, these dirty rats. But I'm telling you, they just kept ramping them up. So here's a new session here. They've already ramped them up. Here's a new session, and they just kept cranking them up on this day. This is the 29th. You can look on your chart if you're following along with me on your boomerang chart. They just kept cranking it and cranking it. Minor pullbacks, because at this time, everything just turned mega bullish. The... Uh, Higher time frame charts, especially like the 135, which is the highest I watch for day trading. You don't need to watch it for boomerang. just need to follow the rules. But I'm saying once that turns, a lot of times, forget it. The market's just going to keep going, which it did. Now, notice here on this day, this is another example. Um, why better to take the time off and just go do something fun? There was no matching dynamic trend bands here on this counter move. We got a, a counter move to the downside, which got a crossover. So that resets the pattern. You really don't want to... It, a counter move, which is a second type of boomerang trade, I'll find one later as we go forward, is one that will occur in a trend move, and it'll counter move, but it won't upset the balance of the crossover, the dynamic trend bands, and the color of dynamic trend band number two. This one actually reset the whole pattern. It wasn't a sell here. But it reset the pattern, and then when they went back to bullish, they took off before they could get a uh, within the pullback signal line with the dynamic trend bands matching. You have to have that. Never happened. Again, here, same thing. Uh, they counter moved. Now, here, again, this is why you don't want to trade on these holiday periods. It's too weird. This, technically, you could have said, okay, well, that's a boomerang trade, right? Because... They crossed under, and then all the colors matched. They went here. Yeah, that's one of those rare boomerang trades. If you took that when you should have been on vacation, got stopped out, 275, ran up to uh, uh, it would be 775 for five-point loss. But then what immediately happened after that? So you got stopped out, right? Well, big deal. Here's a buy channel. Here's the matching dynamic trend bands. You buy a pullback sig line, you immediately got three points. So you immediate you had got stopped out here, but if you're in tune, you know the rules. You say, well, there's a buy signal. You take it. And you made back three of the five points, got out, and then the darn thing just kept going up, 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 just completely rigged. Like I said, I expect they were anticipating what was going to happen in the new year, and they just rigged it up. They don't care about us, but sometimes you have to follow the riggers, and sometimes you have to fade them. Just depends. You don't have to figure it out. Boomerang will do that work for you. So then they blasted them lower into the close. Finally, after such a big ramp up from the previous day too, now we're getting into 1230. You know, just right before the new year, again, you should be on vacation. And again, here's why. On Globex, they start selling off a little, and they start selling off in pre-market. Then the market opened, and they just dropped like a stone here. And you had what's called a counter move here, but this was a reset of the pattern. Now, this was not a bullish 
buy trade here because you got a steep dynamic trend band. That's one of the rules. Don't trade against a steep dynamic trend band unless you get all the matching dynamic trend bands going. So anyway, this one was just uh, that. But then you've got a move here where right after they try to stage reverse, they just got crushed to the downside. So when that happens and you have what I call as an uneven stacking pattern, that means look at this. You have the Cobra way up here, the dynamic trend band number one above number two, which is a bullish sign. And you have the market getting crushed to the downside. Well, sure, all the dynamic trend bands are matching, but with an uneven stacking sequence like this and radical spike moves coming in the day before New Year's or the day before that holiday period, you shouldn't be trading. Don't go short here. It's, it's radical whipsaw here. You should be not trading at all. Even here, you have a buy pattern. You have all the trend bands matching. Yeah, the trade pulled back the sig line at 64 and shot straight up to 71. But the stacking sequence is very widespread. And, and this trade worked out. And a lot of times they will work out initially. And you'll get your three points. But look out below because when this stacking sequence gets really spread out like this, they'll often herky-jerk and whips out of the upside and then they'll come crashing back down, which when this did here. 71 quarter high, crashed all the way down 11 handles to 60 here. So be careful, but it's holiday volume. Nobody's there, just the amateurs uh, kicking each other in the teeth, trying to make money when they should be on vacation like us pros who use Boomerang Day Trader. So here's the rest of the session here, just chopping around like crazy. Finally, you get a uh, matching dynamic trend band color here, and you think you're going to get short here, 65, 75, and they whipsaw the thing. Actually, this, if you got short, look at this, it's pretty amazing. If you got short at 65, 75, you can see the exact high here, 70 half. It actually missed the five point stop by one tick. That's why we use a five point stop. Now, if you got uh, price at 65.50 would have got stopped out. You got 65 quarters stopped out. But if you got 65.75 or higher, it would have actually, the noise would have been held back by the five point stop and then they crashed again here. And another rule of this thing here look at the time 12.04, which is uh, 3.04 New York time, final hour trading the day before New Year's or the day before New Year's Eve. Why are you trading, number one, and why are you trading in the final hour? You see what I mean? You have to use common sense in this business, just good old common sense. You shouldn't be trading, but if you took this one, it barely held the five-point stop and then came crashing down. So the market's still going. Here we go, 1231, New Year's Eve. <laughs> and you're trading. Why? Forget it. Every All the big shots are on vacation. You should be too. Here's the market opening here. No boomerang trades. You're just waiting and waiting. They try to make a, a big downtrend. See, they rigged them way up, and now they're smashing them. Uh, here's the counter move here. Now, we do have a dynamic trend band crossover here. It's, it's not a buy trade by any stretch because you still have that steep dynamic trend band, but it did reset the program. So what that means is now, if you get a sell here, you have the already have the bearish dynamic trend band. As long as these match color, the dynamic trend band number one and two match color, you can go short. So here's your sell pattern. Here they are matching colors right here. Go short here, and down they go for your winning trade there. Now, again, the dynamic trend bands are on in the bullish position, meaning there has been an upside crossover. They're they're completing this pattern here. These are the real piece of cakes because they've already crossed over. Now you get a buy channel and you're just waiting for the colors to match. And that's right here in this pullback. There's your second winning trade here. A counter move, but unfortunately, because for for training purposes today, if this had made a counter move, had a sell arrow and then a rebuy arrow, that would be your second level trade you would have taken. But it, the market didn't give us that on that day, so no trade there. 
Again, New Year's Eve. Uh, you shouldn't be trading, but for whatever reason, here's the market gets hammered to the downside. It starts forming a fat channel, but right before they get too far spread to the downside, there's an exact cross over here and a pullback signal line. You got three points there. Down they go, nothing to do. And uh, coming into the final close, nothing to do here. So let's get into the, the, the last few days, the New Year action here. And the market's still uh, getting hammered. And then we'll uh, go over your question and answers. I got about 15 more minutes to cover the first hour trade. Don't mind these lines up here, by the way. These are my opening range lines, and I can show you that. Um, a little later. These blue lines are just lines that I marked support and resistance areas that I use in my own charts. I just keep them in there because, uh, you know, eventually I clean them all out and redo them, which I probably should do after all this volatility today. But for right now, let's take the next day. Now, this is 1-4. This was Monday. Monday 1-4. Just got, market got roasted. And now we're into, so we just covered that whole uh, holiday period we had a lot of winning boomerang trades, but I highly advise you not to trade during that period, but really spend the time for yourself. Take some time out for yourself. Be the person, you know, be proud of yourself. You're a boomerang trader, a ninja warrior trader. You're making money now. You have the lifestyle you wanted as a trader, as a steady winning trader, and that's exciting. So take time out for yourself and uh, spend some money, have some fun. Here's the market opening on Monday. Now I'll show you what I do with that opening range. Where are those lines? Let's bring them down here. You don't, this is not required for boomerang, but I do this because it's actually a very valuable, it's like your first uh, bias reading every day when you, you know, open up the market. It's a little trick I'll show you. I've been using it for 20 years. You remember originally floor traders, they didn't have computers and boomerang and all these fancy software. All they had was their guts, their wits, and their ability. And what they used were the opening range. They'd key off the opening range, and they'd key off higher lows of certain periods. That's all they used. They're on the floor. They don't have a, a laptop with them or anything. There wasn't any. They just looked around the pit. They could read the noise of the pit, and they would they would mark down the current highs and lows, or they had a, a team partner there that would do a lot of that work for them. Anyway, here we are coming into the opening. So what you do is you take the first five minutes of the opening. Now, here's the first opening here. And we can see going into the first five minutes, this is the high right here. Just show you how I do this. First five minutes. So there's the high. I mark it with a white dash line. You can use whatever you want. And first five minutes uh, ended right about here. So this is clearly the low right here. You see that? Here's your opening range. This white line up here, this white line. That's going to be a very valuable pivot. What I do is I take one extra measure and I put, I go right into the center of the opening range. So 4486, this is on NASDAQ, mini NAS, the best day trading contract in my view, and the one where all the action is usually. 8669, so that's 16, that's 17 points. So half of 17 is what eight and a half points so 69.50 plus eight is 77 so you grab this red line this is just kind of a red color line and you put it at 77 there happens to be one of our blue lines right there too just in fact i'm going to go ahead and remove the blue line well that was the red line that got removed we're going to just change that to the red color there and uh, let's see here. Hold on a quick second. Well, for now, we'll just put it at this color. Not a big deal. Okay, so there is your opening range. So this is what the chart looks like on the right side here. And you've just marked the opening range. This is what it looks like as it's trading. And you've got, uh, yeah, now the first five minutes is done. See that? There's the low. 
there's the high up here and you're watching the opening range you watch the opening range in the center of the opening range just not it's not a boomerang trade or anything like that it's just a bias reading now right off the opening here notice how you got prices pushing above the center and that's just happens to be that way you've got the crossover here right the crossover is occurring so one you, you get this buy channel here and it's right here that the dynamic trend band finally changes to the buy color. So this is a very high risk trade because you're coming off a huge down move. And you got a flat dynamic trend band number two. Now one of the rules in if you have that PDF I sent you and you can always email me and I can send it to you. But one of the simple rules is don't trade against a steep dynamic trend band number two and don't trade against a flat one in most cases. But look here, you see, that's not really a boomerang trade because you got a very you're coming off a big downside move. All you got is a little blip to the upside. Prices are struggling. You've got a flat dynamic trend band, and all the market's doing is trying to reach above top of the opening range. Because once you mark the, op mark the opening range, isn't it just common sense? It's common sense if prices. This is what floor traders used to do. If they're trading above the opening range, lean on the bullish side. If they're trading below the opening range, lean on the bearish side. I put the one in the center, and that gives you an extra little pivot to watch. If they start trading, they try to climb up above the opening range and flop back under the center, and then indeed flop back under the opening range, it's a bearish sign, just something to keep in mind. So here they are struggling to move higher. So this would not have been a boomerang trade. Even though the crossover is there is a flat dynamic trend band coming off a big downside move, this is a highly questionable trade. Well, now a new sell channel opens up after this failure. But the problem is before you could take this trade here. This would have been okay because all the trend bands are matching. It hasn't formed a full fat channel down here yet. So you go short here and 68.50 runs down to 59 for a big move actually. That was okay. Once again here, you're keeping in mind, look, they're struggling still to get up into the opening range and they just can't seem to do it. It's just something that gives you a visual lock and you go, wow, look at that market's trying to go long here. Uh, I, I want to take a long trade, but look how they're struggling and just kind of look at look at the candles like if you put some trend lines in here look at how it's just straight flat across the board flat on the opening range and trading under the center of the opening range even if you took this trade here at a pullback to the sig line right here on the crossover at 69.75 still this is boomerang for you they ran up to 74.75 even here with this rather not very bullish setup you bought them at 69.70, 70. They still ran to 75 on the high there, or 74.75. So you still got three points out of it. And then here, the easiest trades, matching dynamic trend bands, pull back sig line, down they go. So three winning trades right in this little patch here. Now, again, I only stress this because you got to always remember trading like we first posted there is a very very high risk business you just had three winning trades in a row right and you had four contracts you're up 690 bucks after commission you might want to just take the day off and just go get away from the screen and go wow that's amazing with boomerang I just made 700 bucks in a, in less than a half an hour that's a pretty good deal see now if you want to push it you can but I'm just advising you that it's pretty pleasant to make that kind of money and if you compare it to the job you left to become a trader and you found me and you found boomerang and you're here in this webinar and you're going Boy, I could do I can do this for the next twenty years. If you can do it for the next twenty years, that's uh, approximately uh, eleven months times twenty. Well, let's see, twelve times twenty. I'm just giving you an estimate. That's two thousand six hundred forty days a year times twenty. 
you got uh, you got um, 20 trading days times 12. You got 240 trading days a year, right? Times 20 years. 4,800 trading days left in your life. What's the problem? You made 700 bucks in a, less than a half an hour today. It was the luck of the draw. Boomerang was active today. It's not always like that. Sometimes there's an hour or more between trades. It was like, boy, that was nice. The tendency is to let your emotions in the market push you around and go, let me go get some more. And there's nothing wrong with that. But just consider, just do me a favor and consider that making three winning trades and putting 700 bucks in your pocket in a half an hour, at least go outside or walk out of your house and just kind of pace a little bit back and forth and breathe and say, that was nice. And see how you feel. If you want to come back, what's no problem. But anyway... Um, here, look here. You got the dynamic trend bands. There's that tight spread. There's a new buy channel. There's that tight spread. Pull back the sig line, and up they go for another three points. Here they come in again. Sell channel, matching dynamic trend bands. The easiest trades if they match. You got the same side of the the channel. Sell channel, magenta colors. Buy channel, uh, the azul or blue colors, bullish colors. Sell channel, matching dynamic trend bands. Sell short here. Fifth winning trade in a row. Well, now I'm telling you, I'm going to come over there and kick you if you don't stop trading for the day. That's enough. You just made a lot of money. 1200 bucks or so. What is it? Uh, around 1200 bucks after commission in an hour. Just take the day off. Oh, no, you say, I want to keep trading. All right, well... Boomerang will let you do that because here's a new buy channel. Here's the spread, tight spread matching dynamic trend bands. See, right before this dot appears in the sig line, the dynamic trend bands are tight here. 48 quarter, 47, boom, you buy them, up they go. Same thing here. New sell channel, all the trend bands are matching. Sell here, boom, down they go. Now this is uh, coming back from the holiday. So you just added three more winning trades. And here's another one. You're waiting for now. This is important. You gotta remember the rule. It's so simple. You have a crossover that occurs. You have the matching dynamic trend band colors, or you have a tight spread of a point and a half or less. Those qualify you to take a trade on a trade channel on the same side of that configuration. Well, here's the spread right here: 34, 3275. That's a point and a half, right? By the pullback, the sig line here, 40 quarter, they came down to 37 half. You had to take a little heat, and all of a sudden they shot up 46. There's your three points. Seventh winning trade in a row, and it's only uh, 11.30 Eastern Standard Time. So now they shoot up higher. Now they're getting a little bit choppy here. This is not a trade here because the sell channel opened, you exhausted the six pullbacks of signal line before the spread got tight. Just forget this trade. Wait, Just sit and wait for the next exact setup. Well, it's going to be one right around the corner, and here it is. New buy channel, matching colors right here. Pullback signal line, instant gratification as they shoot up three points and hand you what is at the seventh winning trade in a row. Now it gets a little tricky here. Market starts whipsawing because they're really pushing higher, but they're starting to whipsaw here. And uh, you don't have any trades here. You're, the spread's getting tight here, but look at the blinking uh, dynamic trend bed number one's blinking red and blue. And you got the blue here, so you don't have now. This is one of those trades where you wait for the crossover. You have to have the very first thing you have to have is a new sell channel, so nothing's going to happen. You're not going to even analyze a trade until you see this sell arrow print and open up the new sell channel. Well, you've already got the crossover. Even though dynamic trend band number two is the bluish color, the bullish color, it doesn't matter. The crossover has occurred. You got a new sell channel. You trade the pullback, the signal line, and down they go for three points. Make it easy on you. Oh, good. I got my second level trade here finally. I knew it was coming. The old. All we do is what the setup I just showed you, where there's a one and a half point spread, an exact crossover first, like here, or matching colors. It's got to be one of those three. In some cases, like this one, it'll be matching colors after crossover. 
But those are the conditions. The only other trade there is for Boomerang, unless you're making up trades, and if you are, then shame on you. You're going to get losing trades. It's not Boomerang's fault. It's because you're not following the rules. It's called the second level trade. When we're in a trend move, we do allow for a second level trade, never a third or fourth level trade. Those will often work in a big move, but don't take them because they're much higher risk. The whole design of Boomerang is to cut risk, cut risk, cut risk. Focus on just getting winning trades and then just grabbing three points, cutting risk. Grabbing the three points is part of cutting risk. I don't give a you-know-what about the big move. I don't care about it because I just made seven winning trades in a row. I don't care about the big move. There's a lot of risk in sitting there waiting for a big move. I make them all the time in my... Uh, my live trading room but I'm using four or five different setups for my 25 years of experience I'm not just trading the boomerang setups and the reason for that is I want to get out of the market within the first two hours and boomerang often will not allow me to do that because there'll be an hour or so between trades so it's a little different uh, type thing that's the other product that I offer in quotes calling it a product it's like that word vendor people say well you're a vendor I go what do you mean an ice cream vendor like those guys on the street or the old days when I was a kid I went to SeaWorld and all or uh, Knott's Berry Farm they had the monkey vendor and he'd be making that music and the little monkeys running and taking coins from you you know <laughs> so that word vendor is so weird to me I, I don't understand I'm a trader that develops products that are profitable so I don't think that's a vendor to me a vendor sounds like a guy who invents trading products but doesn't know what the hell he's doing oops that's three-fourths of the, <laughs> of the industry. Oh, well. Sorry, you guys. A lot of you have been burned by other products. Know what I'm talking about. And I hope you're laughing now because you got Boomerang and you're in good hands. Here's the only other Boomerang trade other than the ones I just showed you. We just had six or seven of those today on this day, which is 1-4. You with me? Here's the second level trade. This is the only other type of Boomerang trade that you should be taking if you're following the rules. Level 1 pans out. The market establishes a trend. There's a counter move with an arrow. you got to have the counter move arrow, in this case a buy arrow, and the counter move fails. Even maybe prints a blue dot, but it's certainly not a buy trade because the dynamic trend band number uh, 2 is the bearish color. When you get the counter arrow back into the sell trend in this case, then you take that first pullback signal line. It's, it's an authorized boomerang trade. And down you go for, I think it's the eighth winning trade in a row. And once again, you grabbed your three points here. Don't moan and groan. Oh, look how much further they went. Doesn't matter. You just had eight winning trades in a row. I think this was a ninth one. I mean, gradually lick. Let me tell you a little secret. Trade with Boomerang for a year and follow the exact rules, and I can practically guarantee you you're going to develop the intuition from using Boomerang to catch these bigger moves. You'll do them. I catch them frequently in my room. Where's my thing here? Oh, i just give you an example. I'm not trying to sell you the trading room or anything. I stick to, uh, you know, they're two separate products, two completely 100% separate products. But on, for example, on Monday the 4th, which is the day we're going over right now, I had uh, trade number 6 was 14.5 points, and trade number 10 was 13.5 points. And then I followed trade number 10 with trade number 11 for 5.25 points, and we stopped for the day. Again, it's much more volatile than Boomerang. Boomerang I designed for an individual trader that's in an endless loop of losing and breaking even, maybe getting ahead, giving it back. They don't know what they're doing. They're trying different things. They've got a bad case of indicator-itis and webinar-itis. They're checking out constantly new indicators and endless webinars, and everybody's promising them results without any proof. And what I'm saying is, I developed Boomerang after being and exploring the industry for over a decade and saying, I don't see anything here I would personally want to use, so I developed Boomerang. I spent five years in research to develop it, and you can see here we just had eight winning trades or nine, and this is the tenth one here. You can see here the spread's tight here. The crossover occurs here along with matching signals. 
pull back sig line and up they go however this is later in the day I don't recommend trading last hour but if you did trade this it was a blow up move to the upside you got your three points you had nine or ten winning trades in this day hallelujah it's a good day um, so let me continue and then I'll go into your questions here just in a few minutes let me finish up the rest of the session here was uh, yesterday very very volatile yesterday I had uh, mentioned that to look for the market to be supportive it was pretty hard I was overworking the buy side expecting the supportive move which did finally come in but man the bears are just growling we're in a bearish market right now I hate to say it but it looks like we're in a bearish market it could be a little bit rough going forward anyway here's the opening we're just going over boomerang now don't mind my references in the room it's just I want you to know that I'm actively trading every day and we use boomerang charts in the room and I use boomerang can be used in, in a dozen different ways to read the market but all we care about here on these trainings is how to use boomerang to put three points in your pocket 12 ticks and uh, cash and I often refer to a blue collar working traders account which I consider to be a small account trader with five to seven thousand bucks in the account trading four NASDAQ contracts all other references to gold or crude oil or all that that's all a little bit different because there's you know a different amount of uh, money per point etc but you can recalculate it all to be about the same so here's the opening a quick glance tells me the opening range look at that crazy opening range here's the high of the opening range and here's the low is right around here so wide open range price immediately are holding under the opening range without me marking it I can just see that so that's kind of a bearish bias here's the first move under obviously you don't have a trade here because look at the wide spread forget it there's no trade here that's not a sell signal the spread is too wide the stacking sequence is uneven however look at here now you get the dynamic trend band crossing under the dynamic trend band number two which is a bearish bias you got a counter buy channel here which it's not a buy trade you're just sitting and waiting and all of a sudden now you get a sell channel everything's matching up you go short here and down they go for three points yeah 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 I know they went way down here this is where you look up you're gonna follow the boomerang method and make a steady paycheck forget about catching the big move it's very hard for traders to get their ego off of catching the big move oh you left a lot on the table you hear this kind of stuff well I just showed you in my room I do catch those bigger moves but for boomerang and you uh, being a, a relatively new boomerang trader which means under five years of trading with it just follow the method and get yourself on a steady winning course and get a new vision about being a trader most cases I would be willing to bet 90 percent or more of you have been a losing trader for many years in some cases maybe break even maybe you had some great months and then you give it back I'm trying to help you break that cycle and get off of worrying about catching the big move and just catch the steady moves replace it put a sign in your desk I don't catch the big moves I catch the steady winning moves something like that get something to anchor your brain into what boomerang does for you so here's your first winning trade there you waited through all this you didn't have anything to do here nothing to do no rules about boomerang says to trade anything in here there's your first winning trade you put 230 bucks in your pocket that's a great deal if you stopped for the day and you did that every day you'd make 60 grand a year well you're gonna keep going here's a counter move right and it doesn't upset the the dynamic trend man number two and there's a cross over here admittedly so that kind of changed the pattern but even though it changed the pattern still you have a counter move that fails a new cell panel channel and right here you've got the dynamic trend bands matching so if you go short here that would have been a correct boomerang trade if you missed it or skipped it because of the crossover no big deal but if you did short this with the matching DTBs here this this dot or this dot 81 quarter came down to 76 half and you got another three points second winning trade well now that they've crossed over the bias is going to be bullish from the crossover alone here's a new buy channel they shoot higher and in this case here's here's the rule for these deals and this is the one modification that we use when you have a new channel that opens up and you got a brand new crossover and they shoot up higher 
we only want it, this is not this doesn't apply in this case but when that does happen and I'll find one that does you can trade right at the crossover if there's no pullback sig line you can trade a pullback to the cobra line in this case <clears throat> that was not the case because the new crossover occurred right in here or the first matching trend bands you can speculate that it would have been okay and it did certainly pan out here and here but it wasn't exactly a correct boomerang trade. I'll try to find one of those so I can show you how that works. This is not one here either because the crossover is way up here. You want to get, it's this isn't bad, but you generally what happens is when you get a new cell channel here, you don't have the right configuration, no pullback to the sig line to set it up, <clears throat> the general rule is if there is a brand new crossover, you can trade a pullback to the Cobra, which is right here at 86 quarter, and this trade would have gotten stopped out. So it, it wasn't exactly the right setup. You really want it to have a smoother pattern coming in. Even if you got stopped out, so what? It who look up at your sign so what who cares no big deal say you traded that modification rule you traded the cobra and they stopped you out so what that's part of trading losing is part of trading losing trades is part of trading but with boomerang you're only going to get one out of ten at the most usually okay so you lost big deal well guess what now you got to cross under to the downside all the dynamic trend bands are matching. You trade a pullback the sig line here at 83 quarter and down they go. So you just got your three points back. Plus you had a winning trade or two earlier, I think. Yeah, you had a couple winning trades earlier. So there's your short there. Same thing. You get your three points really quick and bloop, they just keep going to the downside. So what? Who cares? You don't care. You just wait for the next correct setup. Now what's wrong with this deal here? This is like that one we had earlier. The stacking sequence, everything's so widespread out. You could say, well, the dynamic trend bands were within a point and a half of each other. I know. And on this pullback, when that condition was present, uh, 67 quarter shot up to 71.75. So you got three points in there. But I'm just telling you, you can take them, but it's a higher risk trade with that stacking sequence. What I mean by the stacking sequence. Look at the, the Cobra way up here, the signal line way up. Look at all the space between the trend bands. Just wait. You'll get another one, another signal right around the corner. Here's a crossover, right? So now that's going to lean on the bullish side. Here, you, no signal. You don't do anything until you get a, a buy arrow, and that'll be alarmed and signaled. There's a buy arrow. There's a pullback signal line. Everything's matching. Up you go. So you just made back your five point loss plus an additional point. And now guess what you got? A second level trade. Here's that trade. Here is a second level trade that f completely fails to change the dynamic trade trend band number two to an opposite bearish color. There's even a yellow dot print. It's not a sell trade, of course, under any circumstance that a sell trade. It's a counter move that fails. You got a new buy channel opening here, pull back sig line right here, and up they go for another three points. Now you're coming into the later part of the session. Market's running up, running up. You're just waiting. Now keep in mind again, this is why you're sitting at your desk at your job and you got all this work that is expected to be around the clock. That's not the same with boomerang. When you work in an office, if you finish a project, you just sit there and relax and have a cup of coffee, put your feet on the desk. If that boss walks by and sees that, he's going, what the hell are you doing? Get to work. You're, every minute you're here, you should be doing something productive, right? Well, with Boomerang, the only productive thing is getting the correct trade set up, and that's how you earn your paycheck. So from this trade, which was an instant gratification, that pullback rocket ship to the upside instantly, and you were out within a minute, probably about a minute or two minutes, 1040, your next boomerang trade didn't set up to way over here at 11.43. Do you see that? 10.40. Here's your next boomerang trade, 11.40. So there was an hour here between trades. Now, if you're at a regular job, you better be working at that hour unless it's an authorized lunch break or something. you got a lot of work to do. You better be doing something. 
Boomerang, it's the exact opposite. You don't do anything. You sit on your hands until you get an exact boomerang set up, and there it is. Three points again. Nothing to do down here. Let them drop. Who cares? We got our three points. We got our 230 bucks on a blue-collar working account. We don't care. Now the market goes wild. It goes full of whipsaw, and you're into the final hour. That's the end of that day. Let's wrap it up here. I'm running a little over time. Let's get the final day knocked out. And then we're and I'll go into your question and answers here. Okay, here's a new session. This is today's huge gap down minus 25 handles. They close them down 25 handles right where they gapped them down in the more. Actually, they gapped down 35 handles just on ES just before the opening today. And uh, I didn't trade today in my room because we had the FOMC report coming out too. And I saw that gap down. I said, this is nuts. This is not a normal day. I'm not going to trade this crap. Forget it. And I just kind of bowed out. And we were, I was already forecasting a cautionary day because of the F, upcoming FOMC meeting at 2 o'clock. And uh, so I was already going to say we're just going to lightly trade if at all today. And then when I saw the gap down of 35 S, that's the worst I've ever seen on, on ES. That was the worst I've ever seen as far as a gap. I, so I just, you know, totally already forget it. We're not trading today. Just take the day off. If you want to trade, just follow Boomerang if you have Boomerang. Or, uh, But I'm not going to trade this stuff. It's too volatile. Not in the mood. So here's the, cross, okay, here's the opening pre-market. And all this occurred, the rebound, I remember this. Right Here's the opening right here. Again, this is a West Coast chart. Here's the opening. So all this rebound occurred right off the opening. Then they kept pushing them. And pushing them, trying to rebound. You got an Elliott wave level one, two, three, four, and then a blow off, very choppy fifth wave here before a pullback comes in. And it was a very choppy pullback. And right in here, when I saw this after the first half an hour, I was talking to everybody, first 20 minutes or so, going over the news, going over the insane news of uh, potential looming of Obama impeachment. They are, the RNC, the Republican National Committee, is filing, uh, well, they're voting this in about eight days on whether to file these impeachment documents. They got 48 articles. That's not on the mainstream news, of course, because, you know, the Democrat rec controlled news right now. They're not letting that happen. Just like what's going on with Hillary Clinton, same thing. I'm not being political. I'm just saying, Whatever the party's in charge, they can control the news. Uh, and so, but you got the big thing with uh, Korea lighting off supposedly uh, an H bomb and all this stuff. It was, I just said, what a great day to just forget about trading. Anyway, so the market ramped up. They made a pullback after the Elliott Wave upside pattern. No trades here on Boomerang. Just forget it. Big fat channel here and. Uh, the crossover occurred here, and it was there wasn't a pullback to the Cobra till over here. Just forget about it. However, well, even see this is why it wasn't a good day for trading. It was too volatile. Look here, here's a new buy channel coming in here, and you're looking for matching dynamic trend bands, which didn't really occur until this candle here, and they just rocket shipped higher. Nothing going on there, so no trade. Same thing here. By the time the spread tightened up and the color started matching. They had already formed a fat channel, and down they go. Now, arguably, right here at the crossover, you could have traded the pullback to the Cobra. Now, this I knew we'd find one of these setups. This, the, the modification of the rule is if you get a downside or a either side move, but before you're getting a sell channel in this case, the pullback, the signal lines are coming in, but you don't have a crossover matching trend bands. But right at the point of the crossover, if the price is right here at the point, come back and hit the Cobra, which is this dotted line here. You can trade that. It's a rare occurrence, but I did, before I put this rule into the training classes here and talked about it, I back tested, I don't know, I went back over like 60, 70 charts, spent one weekend, and then I said, okay, this is a good rule. It's not going to always, like anything, it's not going to always work, but it's extremely reliable, probably about 80% accurate. So if that hit the Cobra near that, you could have gone short here at 39.75, and they took them down to 31 quarter for your three points there. Right, again, this is why I didn't trade it in. You can see on Boomerang, there's virtually no Boomerang trades today because 
it's so volatile. Here's a buy tray, a buy channel opening, but look, they just rocket ship higher. Here comes a sell channel, and they're just dropping right off this ramp up crunch within what is this? Uh, 805. Within three, four minutes, they're just getting crunched to the downside again. No trade here. It's it's kind of like a second level. It's like a counter move setting up for a second level move, but it's not viable because right from here, then they go rocket shipping higher up here again. Forget it. You want a smooth stacking sequence. That's the real key to successful boomerang trades. So no trade up here. Big fat channel formed by these one, two, three, four, four, five spike candles forming a fat channel and no trade. Just wait to right here. Here's where they're coming. Look at the tight spread here. New sell channel. New tight channel right here. Pull back sig line. There's the winning trade. You got to wait for them. You got to know how to read the markets using boomerang. You got to wait for these setups. They're very, very simple. And if for any reason uh, it's still not clear to you, I don't know how that could be, but it's possible. Maybe you're a little bit newer to trading. No, no shame or harm there. Um, number one, watch this recorded seminar over and over and over till you get it. Or the easiest thing, just wait for all the dynamic trend bands either to cross over or match color. But all the other rule is just all you're measuring is the spread of the dynamic trend. You want it to be as close to crossing over as possible because when the dynamic trend bands cross over, it's a very, very high percentage ratio of a winning trade. And in fact, in most cases, a big winning or a, a big move. So we actually have the dynamic trend band crossover is a big move indicator, unlike any system in the market that we have built into Boomerang. So there's another winning trade there. Now here, another again, I love it. Classic second level trade. Here's a downside move. A trend is established. A counter move that fails to change the color of the dynamic trend band number two kind of a whipsaw, herky-jerk kind of jump higher that fails. And all you're watching for is that you got to have the arrow print the counter move. It's certainly not a buy trade. It's just a counter move. And then when you see the failure, you'll know by a, a return back to the sell side with a new sell channel arrow, pull back sig line, and down they go. Very easy. That's the only other. There's only those two trades with boomerang. It's all you got to learn to make a tremendous amount of money. If you're trading a five thousand seven five to seven thousand dollar kind of blue collar working traders account and you're making these trades that I'm showing you here every day, you can make two hundred thousand dollars a year just on a small account like that. Tight spread here, cross uh, buy channel. First thing you watch for is the buy channel and you ask yourself, step one, do I have a, a buyer I have a buy channel? Are the dynamic trend bands within a point and a half of each other? matching color or already having crossed over here it is a point and a half from each other therefore i will buy you just write it down like an affirmation therefore i will buy the first pullback to the sig line which occurred right here or right here and up they go for three points same thing now you're waiting and they ramped up you got your three points you're waiting wait a lot of winning trades today you're saying, do I have I have a new sell channel? Are the dynamic trend bands within a point and a half of each other or matching the same color or having already crossed over? In each of the cases here, the answer is no. They're not matching color. The spread is too wide. And within this configuration, one, two, three, four, all six pullback the sig lines are used up. There's no trade here. There's no short here. And the market fell up, excuse me, fell apart. But there's no trade here, and you shouldn't cry one single tear over it. You look up at your sign, which is, should be above the top of this chart on your screen. It says, "So what? Who cares? No big deal." You've already had I don't remember six, seven winning trades today. You should have stopped back on number trade three or four or five, but you, this didn't happen. But don't worry, there's another trade around the corner because sure enough, as soon as that spread, remember, as long as those conditions are there, you got a new buy channel. So the first thing you ask yourself, are the dynamic trend bands within a point and a half of each other matching the same color or having already crossed over, which occurred right here? Well, right here, you can see the spread is 4406 and here it's 450. So 
this this or this pullback sig line were all valid boomerang buy trades and they shot up now again final hour trading which i don't recommend but it was a valid boomerang trade just for academic purposes and here's the close and we're done for the session as far as uh, the training today of what i've showed you a lot of information there but very simple information 